probably thinking, Kyle, how do we end up here again? And that's a good question. And the reason why we're here again during isolation, where we're probably going into the pantry and fridge too much, not sticking to our exercise regimes, and watching way too much of The Good Doctor, us authors have decided to band together to read you a story that probably doesn't make sense at all. But right now, not much in the world does make sense. But at least we have each other. You kidnap me. I regain myself. I would never show my weakness to a vampire. Pardon? No. I was the only one who tried to save your life, he corrected me. The glimmer of the blue gem on his ear grabbed my attention as he stepped forward. I was disgruntled by how comfortable I was in his presence. I flushed with fury, knowing I had to kill him. I had to kill all vampires. I searched around me, looking for what I could use as a weapon. Maybe I could kick in the wooden bed, splintering it and using it. Esmore, your hunters abandoned you. They left you for dead when that grenade went off. I swooped in as fast as I could, but you'd already been gunned down with shards from the explosion. If that's the truth, then I should be dead. Wow, he mocked. You're so depressing. I thought you would at least idolise me or something after I saved you. You kidnapped me, I spat savagely, hiding my pain as I moved uncomfortably. I saved you. At least admit that. We walked in silence for some time, weaving deep into the quarter. Past Bourbon Street, past all the loud and drunk tourists. Past the warm and safe lights and the cop cars and the music from the bars. Before long, we were in the dark part of the quarter, mostly residential, with very few people on the streets. She suddenly stopped and walked up to the stoop of a private residence, filled with keys, opened the door, and gestured for me to enter. Wait, is this someone's house? I asked. This is the house where the dead scream in silence, where the walls rot. Where pain becomes pleasure, where pleasure becomes death. This is the house of Din. He who dwells on the Black Star. Enter. He leaned towards me, easily bridging the gap between us. His scent teased my nose, salt, sweat, and a little musk. I looked my fill, taking in the broad cut of his shoulders, the barrel of his chest, his trunk-like legs. A mountain of a man, he made me feel dainty and small. A not-so-easy feat. I'd been born curvy. My body was built big and beautiful, and no amount of exercise or dieting was going to change my shape. I'd long since learned to love my curves, accentuating them, and finding pleasure in the way my body moved. I'd grown up in Capricorn Cove, compared constantly to the sun-bleached blondes with slim limbs and tan skin. I hadn't minded. I'd been different, unique. But my body wasn't in fashion, which meant the crossover between boys who wanted me and my own attraction to them was minuscule. I had a feeling that this god of a man before me, that he'd embraced my curves, showing them the kind of love and appreciation I'd always held out for. She was a fucking dominant wet dream. He never would have picked she'd respond this way. She was too feisty, argumentative, and she absolutely hated being told what to do. But there she lay, sprawled across his lap, a fine tremor rocking her otherwise lax frame, panting shallow, even breaths, while her pussy wept a continuous flow of honey. All signs she had reached that point that every dom wants to send their partner, subspace. With one final slap, he rubbed her heated bottom. The crimson glow satisfied him. Her confused, whimpered plea of, Blake, I, I need, I, undid him. He'd taken her to a place Becca wouldn't understand, where the desire to be filled, to be brought to release, rode her hard, a place he was very familiar with. Her musky scent enveloped him in a cocoon of passion. 
His cock beat in erratic pulse and his balls were tight orbs against its base. Damn her for being so responsive. Hey, Mr. Hottie, you've got some nice muffins there. Why don't you take your shirt off so I have a view of the whole package? He shakes his head and waves me off without even turning around. I continue loudly in his direction. I guess I'll have to check out the other views. He stops and turns around in time to see a couple of the new arrivals pull their shirts off and flex while they smile at me. I giggle because I've got firemen flexing for me. And the only thing better than that is Mick. Mick yells out, Dino, tend to her, please. I need to finish prep. The kid immediately bounces off his lounger with a wide, dirty grin. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Dino, my pleasure. You just watch her. I turned to look at him and the look in his eyes made my heart hurt. I took hold of his hand once more and made my way down to the bedroom. I turned my body to face him and placed my hands on his chest. Slowly, running my hands up to his shoulders, I very carefully removed his cut. Sliding it down his arms, I took it and carefully folded it in half and pressed my lips against his president's patch. I very delicately placed it down on the bed. I pressed against his chest and got him to sit down on the bed. Kneeling down on the floor, I pulled the bottom of his jeans up to reveal his boots. Untying the laces on them, I pulled them off his feet. Standing back up, I stood between his legs. Cameron moved his hands to rest on my side, and we locked eyes on each other. Neither said a word. We didn't need to talk. I was saying everything I needed with my actions. I was strong enough to be able to take care of him. He didn't need to be strong for me. Thunder Guys is the one in that series. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Go get it!